Hey everyone, today we're going to go through all of my pickups for November 2023. So this month, as said, was November, and in the States, uh, that means uh, much later in the month, right after Thanksgiving, is uh, Black Friday. And honestly, did not get anything that was uh, like brand new or anything that had plenty of advertisements, because honestly, there was no major retailer that had like any like really good deals that uh, appealed to me so therefore pretty much everything that we're going through here is all stuff that i've gotten from retro talk games uh, and uh, it's all just like uh, older retro titles essentially but there are a few first few things we'll go through is stuff that just uh, came in through the mail but before we get to that if you guys are interested in content like this do consider subscribing to the channel because i do this uh, monthly and potentially doing some uh, future uh, new content as well so yeah i appreciate you guys uh, subscribing if you, this type of content does interest you all right so these first three things uh, this all comes uh, from uh, play asia the first game it is coffee talk now this game it is a very similar to a uh, valhalla which you're basically you're playing as a uh, guy running a coffee shop and you just make up uh, whatever uh, drinks that uh, your customers ask and just listen to them talk and that's about it um it doesn't uh, seem like it'd be that uh, riveting of gameplay but believe me the characters and uh, the the stories and the dialogue behind them is like what makes games like these uh, really, really good. And honestly, I did just finish this uh, last night, as a matter of fact, and it's not as good as Valhalla, in my opinion, in terms of uh, the characters uh, for like uh, having like really deep and interesting uh, stories behind them. Um, but this game does have uh, like a very like well done uh, art style for its pix. It is pixel art, but it's like very well done, very smooth, uh, and the, the music, of course, is really really good. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in like a very chill game, I can't recommend Coffee Talk uh, enough. All right, the next one is Coffee Talk Episode Two. He hibiscus and butterfly i think i said that first uh, word right haven't played this one yet uh, but probably when i'm done uh, making this video this will probably be the next thing that i'm playing is so yeah really looking forward to playing this eventually both of these uh, releases was made from a uh, serenity forge uh, that pre-ordered these like a while ago when they first came up on play asia they did do uh, um uh, three different editions you could get uh, of these games uh First one is what you saw and just like a standard packaging with extra contents inside. There was a second one that was like a bigger box and had way more stuff in it. Or this third one where it actually came with a actual coffee mug and a bunch of other things. Didn't bother getting that though. One didn't have the money for it and was I haven't played these games at all. So couldn't like justify spending that much money for like what the editions went for. But I'm glad that I stuck with these editions though in all honesty. Right, the last thing that uh, came from Play Asia is a uh, Reverie Sweet Ass Edition. Um, this is one of the uh, Play exclusives uh, on uh, PS5 that Play Asia has done. Specifically, this is number three that they have done. This uh, game in particular, it is uh, a uh, top-down uh, Zelda clone. Essentially, haven't played it yet, but the gameplay that I saw of it, it does look really good. I do remember this is also on uh, the Vita as well. I don't know if it got a physical release, but it is on the Vita digitally, though. It does look pretty fun, though, nonetheless. All right. This next thing, this, as of today, is the very last physical 3DS game. You would remember months ago, or in fact, like last year, I think it was, the uh, at the time, what was the last uh, physical game. So it was the GoGo Coca Polo games uh, on the 3DS that. Uh, was up for sale on limited run so website but now this is the new a crown for the position for the 3ds and it is shakedown hawaii this is the limited edition that um v blank had on their website if they still have standard copies of it i may get that as well because i'm going to keep this sealed honestly but yeah shakedown hawaii 
Um, if you guys are really familiar with this game, you would know that uh, this exact game is also the last physical release on the Wii U and the original Wii as well, and also on the PS3 as well, alongside um, Retro City Rampage on the PS3. So V-Blank, they definitely have a fascination of trying to be like the very last physical releases uh, for uh, Legacy Systems. So we'll see if they can hold that crown, uh, but... If you guys do remember, after the 3DS had its eShop uh, closed, um, a limited run, they did tweet out like one last physical release they were going to do that was not Go Go Coca Polo. And I'm sure it is not this game they're talking about because this was all V blank that they did for themselves that was only on their website. So we still potentially have one more physical 3DS game that has yet to be released, and it's going to be from Limited Run. And whenever that does get revealed, I am definitely going to be picking it up. All right, the last game that uh, came in the mail, this is from a limited run, it is uh, Thumper. The reason I got this specifically is uh, it was a PlayStation VR 2 uh, physical release. Um, this did have a PSVR 1 physical release, uh, but uh, in that was also released from Limited Run. But if you want to pick up that secondhand, it is really expensive, and this was just a much cheaper and objectively better option. Now it's on VR 2. Um, this game, it is uh, uh, optional for VR, but believe me, this game you want to play in VR. It's basically a rhythm game where you are playing as like this be this beetle thing and you're just going really fast up this railway and uh, depending on what you uh, come across uh, you have to press like certain buttons uh, to uh, like bypass them and to continue up on the railway and you want to do your best to like have like a perfect run essentially for a high rank score and this game honestly for the way like the music is and the some stuff that you see coming up uh, on you it honestly gets uh, a little creepy in all honesty you would have to play the game for yourself to really know what i'm talking about but yeah i really enjoyed it hence why i wanted a physical release uh, of it so that's thumper for you well, was very first um physical psvr2 game that i ever got uh, so interesting to see how it has it for the banner right up top which pretty obnoxious honestly and it also has the vr2 logo right up top there which i kind of like that a lot more compared to how it was on uh, the vr1 for ps4 games but nonetheless that is viper for you all right now the rest of this is basically all pickups that i got from retro taku games which uh, this year at their store was uh, basically uh, um, uh, they already had like 10% off of everything in the store throughout the whole month of November. But, uh, if you also had like their, uh, hat, uh, you would get an additional 10% uh, off. So 20% off of all of the games that I got here from them. And when Black Friday uh, came around uh, that, uh, they had a 25% off for consoles. Then you had the hat, uh, then it was essentially 35% off for any console that you get that wasn't um, um, current gen systems. But uh, the system I did pick up from them that I don't have up here, it is a, a PlayStation 4 Pro. Specifically, it's the model that has the uh, the figure 8 uh, power connector for it instead of the uh, original one that uh, the launch units had. But my goal with this uh, PS4 Pro is uh, to put an 8 terabyte uh, SATA SSD inside of it and I'm going to use that to primarily play like all of my uh, PS4 games because well, previously I was using my PS5 for it but all PS4 games would be installed on an 8 terabyte external hard drive and if you guys use external hard drives on the PS5 you should know it slows down the system so much in terms of like first turning it on and waiting for stuff to load up it just slows down the system so much that it's just getting really frustrating in all honesty especially knowing what the system is capable of for its storage read speeds but yeah and for now i got the ps4 pro just have to uh, order in the ssd which is gonna wait till it's at the right price point probably when it goes uh, or like well below 300 dollars uh, for one that's probably when i'll pick it up then make that my primary system for playing ps4 games there are still like some ps4 games that do have patches on ps5 that do run a lot better so those will be the exception of course but 
primarily like everything will just be played on the PS4 for actual PS4 games. All right, in terms of games themselves, first one we got was Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So it is only um, Assassin's Creed Origins and a 3 remaster that I need to get on current platforms so that way I can play through this whole series uh, finally. I've uh, stopped at uh, Black Flag back when I first got my first ever PS4 back then and just stopped playing the series afterwards because of how terrible Unity was. All right, next game is Tales of Arise. If you guys have been following me for a long time, you would know that I actually bought the collector's edition of this game, but I have since uh, sold that though and did get uh, like all my money back for it and then some. But I still had like a digital copy of this game that um, Namco Bandai gave out because there was shipping delays for the collector's editions for those who did pre-order it. And uh, since I no longer have that, and I would still rather have a physical uh, re copy of this game. Went ahead and got, get, got this. All right, next game is Yakuza 6, The Song of Life. And this is the Essence of Art edition. This is one that comes in like a kind of like a taller case uh, compared to a normal PS4 case. And inside it has like this uh, art book with this uh, pretty nice uh, slip cover. Then inside it is just a standard uh, art book. And at the very end of it is the actual game itself. There is still a couple of Yakuza games that I would like to get uh, before I jump into the series. And when I do, I believe it is the... Yakuza, how do you say it, Ka Kawami games that uh, I should probably start out with because those are remakes of the first and second game, if I recall correctly. Or unless you guys uh, are experienced with the series, like what is like a good place to start? Just let me know in the comments below. All right, next game is Helmut the Badass from Hell. I remember seeing this game uh, digitally on the PlayStation Store, and then when I looked uh, more into it, I found out that it had a physical release. If I remember correctly, this is a top-down bullet hell game, if I remember correctly. But what really stuck out to me was uh, the art style, which was basically a pixel art style. And looking at this cover art, they are like slightly ripping off the original Dooms a cover art with the main guy in the middle right there. If you know like that classic cover art and pose that Doom guy did, just one that uh, indie devs love to rip off sometimes. All right, next game is DMC Devil May Cry Definitive Edition. So this is the re-release of the one Devil May Cry game that is the black sheep of the series. Either of that or probably DMC2 would probably be considered the black sheep, but this one is was definitely polarizing to the fan base when it first came out because they completely changed Dante for how he was as a character as well as his uh, hair that he mocked uh, us uh, about it in-game. But nonetheless, still haven't played the game myself, uh, but this is definitely the best version of it to play. The rest version would be the PC version, but consoles uh, got this, though. All right, next game. Uh, this set has been uh, on my radar for quite some time, but I've never had like the desire to pick it up until now because of all these uh, sales going on. It is the Quantic Dream Collection. So this is every single game that uh, Quant uh, Quantic Dream has uh, made uh, ever since the PS3 with Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, uh, and Detroit Become Human, with Detroit being the last uh, game that they made. With this uh, particular release, it has uh, all of the games in their separate cases. Just for Heavy Rain and Beyond Two, Two Souls, they're both in like uh, this one case here, and Detroit Become Human is uh, its uh, own uh, case. Haven't played either of these games, but hear enough about them that they come up a lot for unique uh, PlayStation exclusives, but I do believe all three of these, they have been released on PC in recent years, so... Yeah, there's that. Uh, uh, kind of cool to get like a Detroit, uh, given I live in Michigan, and Detroit is literally like an hour, yeah, about like an hour, an hour, 15 minutes away from me. All right, next game is God of War 3 Remastered. So I remember when this first uh, released on the PS4, this was really when the community was really like uh, debating if uh, companies are getting a 
like really obsessed with doing a, a remasters uh, at the time. Nowadays, like we will gladly take any of these so that way we have other options to play older games. But this one was really strange because it was strange that they only gave us the third game in this. They didn't give us like one, two, um, Ascension that came out after this in a few years of, uh, when this ago, when this released at the time. Nonetheless, still cool to have it, uh, though, and I believe, like, God of War 3 is mostly considered, like, the best of uh, the original uh, games, or, or, like, the gameplay style before they changed over to the generic Resident Evil 4 ripoff uh, style that I like to call it, uh, where it's just third-person over-the-shoulder cam over camera that uh, just doesn't interest me a lot these days at all. All right, next game. Uh, this release is really cool that it exists because it's just a very affordable way to uh, play these games that originally are Super Nintendo games, and they are very, very expensive to get even just loose carts of them. But this one, it is Rock, uh, Pocky and Rocky Reshrined. So this uh, release, uh, it is based on the original. I do believe like these are. Uh, I think they're just ports of the original. Pocky and Rocky on the Super Nintendo. I haven't played this yet, though. But if you are familiar with the Super Nintendo's library, uh, Pocky and Rocky 1 and 2 are infamous for being very expensive on that system. It's basically a, a top-down a bullet hell game, essentially, that uh, from what it seems like, you're constantly going up this plane and you're just fighting off a bunch of enemies as they come at you. But really cool to get this, though. So at least this, uh, these games have like a very affordable, official way to play them. Okay, next game is Dragon Quest Heroes 2. This is when the Dragon Quest games, uh, they uh, basically did a Dynasty Warriors uh, type of uh, spinoff, uh, very similar to how um, uh, Zelda did uh, with uh, Hyrule Warriors. Uh, and um, also Persona did like their own Dynasty Warriors games, uh, but uh, Dragon Quest, uh, they specifically got two releases of it, so saw it for a good price, that's why I got it. Alright, next game is Dragon Quest Heroes 1. This is the day one edition that came with uh, extra content with it, but was all on codes that have already been redeemed. But... I do look forward to playing like both of these is I do kind of like the uh, Dynasty Warriors uh, gameplay style, the Muso genre is what we call it. But I believe still to this day, uh, Persona 5 Scramble is probably the best Muso game that ever been made. Then behind that would probably be the Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition and then um, the, whatever the Breath of the Wild one was called. I can't remember the name of it uh, right now. The Age of Calamity, that, that's what it was. All right, next game. I was surprised to see this at a Retro Taku Games because I thought this game, there's not a lot of uh, copies of it out there, uh, at least like years ago. It uh, kind of was uncommon to find this, but nonetheless, pretty cool to finally get in for a very good price too. It's Knights of Azure 2, Bride of the New Moon. So this is one uh, PS4 game that it has uh, gotten um, reprints in recent years, but it is really holding its value, though. Like, it essentially costs as much as, like, a brand new game if you want to get this. Um, it is a really, really good uh, RPG game uh, that I've uh, seen plenty of gameplay of. And it does look like a lot of fun that I do look forward to uh, jumping into this. But want to get the first game, though, before I jump into this specifically, and Sally, they didn't have the first game there, so hopefully I'll find that uh, for a good price one of these days. All right, this next one, I am definitely going to butcher the name, but I'll try my best. It is Yuta Rimono Mask of Truth. Get, give me a rating in the comments uh, to uh, let me know how well I did. But this is one uh, RPG series uh, I have seen uh, plenty of uh, videos uh, on, uh, as well as showing up in some like lesser known RPGs on recent platforms. So interested to see what this one's all about. I mean, if it was published by Atlas, that's definitely going to be a title that I'm probably going to pick up. Okay, next game is Alien Isolation Nostromo Edition. The Nostromo edition, it specifically came with a DLC where you could play as the original uh, crew members from like the first uh, Alien movie, and of course the codes for this was uh, used up already, but Alien Isolation, still one of the best survival horror games in recent years. 
haven't sat through and played it myself yet though so played like other survival horror games recently but this is definitely one that i look forward to playing of though for sure is i love the alien property so much though specifically like alien aliens is those are like the two primary ones uh, that uh, you should like and watch and debatable if like all the recent the uh, stuff that came out after that is like up to you to judge if you like them or not not all right next game is the last of us part two if you remember i did have the collector's edition of this game but due to sony's business practices for how they handle collector's editions uh, not a fan of that at all so got rid of that stuff and got a standard copy of this game back so I can at least uh, one, of the, one of these days actually sit through and finish this game. I did play this game originally when it came out. Uh, I didn't care about like any of the like internet drama going on of, about the game that but still to this day that uh, no matter what side you're on for this game like you're gonna get like heat from either side though so you can't win like no matter what opinion you have on this game. And of course, uh, I think it was like the day after I got this, that's when they announced that they're doing a remaster of this game on PS5. Clearly, we know where Sony's priorities are for first party stuff on PS5. That really infuriates me so much uh, about that. But whenever I feel like playing through this game, well, hopefully it turns out all right. Is originally why like I dropped it uh, back then was because this is literally like the first game and not a lot has changed and that was all that I was looking forward to because I knew I, I was not going to like the story at all because that was beaten to death online even way before the game came out and just like the gameplay is like meh this is just a Resident Evil 4 knockoff just you can't really do like uh it's not like John Wick style for a lot of stuff, just like how Resident Evil 4 was, so it wasn't as entertaining. And uh, just the constant, like, a triple A cliche crafting systems that uh, every single big budget game has to have. And just, I just didn't care. I just got really bored with it and just put it off on the side. And maybe one of these days I'll play it. Or maybe I'll wait out on the PS5 remaster to play the game that way. We'll see. Right. Next game is Drive Club VR. Um, I did get uh, Gran Turismo Sport. Uh, I believe it was last month I picked that up. But uh, hey, Drive Club also had like a VR edition of uh, the game as well too. That's why that I got it. it. Was really cheap though. That's why that I got it. it was like less than five bucks I think. All right, and the last PS4 game we got, um, aside from uh, Knights of Azure Two, is one that I was really excited to get from uh, this month. It is, uh, let's see if I can pronounce it right, Darison, the Darison, it does have some apostrophes uh, in there, so I probably uh, didn't pronounce it right, but this game is, uh, I still believe, reason enough to still keep your PSVR 1 hooked up uh, alongside your PSVR 2. Reason is, this is still exclusive to the PlayStation VR. I don't think this is on a PC VR either or any other VR platform. And uh, what will really stick out for this game is it, it is one that was made by From Software. And uh, you could basically think of this as maybe like a spiritual successor to their Echo Knight games that From Software has not touched ever since uh, Echo Knight Beyond back on the PS2. This came out, I believe, after uh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, either after or before that. And this was just like some side game that they like released. And still, I don't think a lot of people know about this game. So if you're into From Software, you want to like uh, get like every title that they've ever made. This is definitely one to uh, look out for. It's still pretty affordable. And I would highly recommend that you get it before it potentially goes up in price one of these days. Right. next stack before we get to the next stack do a quick shout out to all of those that have still been watching up to this point so we're at like the end of the year and we'll say i know that uh, content on this channel has really nothing been nothing but pickups i'm fully aware of that but i am looking to uh, change that up because currently what i 
want to do and maybe do them like after uh, like a days after I upload this video is I'm making up like a uh, avatar of myself that I'll be using that to be like my in place or representation of myself for doing like a discussion topic videos because I know I've said like in the past like I want to make uh, certain videos but they were always going to be like live action as we see here but I need a script for that uh, and I can't focus at all if I am recording like this uh, here as you guys can clearly tell that sometimes throughout these videos I just ramble right so that's what I'm looking to do to hopefully like uh, push out more content on this channel going forward uh, next year um if you guys have any suggestions that uh, you want to give me for any uh, video ideas uh, for like uh, for like videos where I have an in the uh, uh, in place avatar of myself while I'm reading off script like let me know just like what do you want to see off of this channel though I'll take like any discuss the any uh recommendations you guys have I do have plenty of stuff that I do want to make with this whole idea in mind but if again if you have any recommendations please sound it off in the comments uh, below and your secret call out code if you've been watching so far is a uh, 20 is a uh, 26 uh, it's 26 uh, minutes to sound off the comments you've been watching up to this point Greatly appreciate all the support, and hopefully uh, next year will be a, a big change uh, for us coming up. Of course, we still got like one more month uh, here in December, but I can tell you right now, I'm not going to have a lot of stuff to show in December because personally, got to get like other stuff paid off first before I can consider like buying a lot of stuff for games. So expect uh, December not to not have a lot of stuff to show in all honesty, uh, but hey, we'll see what happens though. Okay, next game that we got, we have one Vita game that I got, and I'm really happy to finally have this. So this is one that uh, that has like never gone down in price and has only went up in value since then. But at RetroTaku, they were already selling this for a good price, and then combined with sales, like, oh, I'm glad that I got this. The Metal Gear Solid HD Collection. I originally had uh, this these games uh, digitally on the Vita back when it, I first got my uh, first one uh, back then, the OLED model. Just never got it physically for some reason until now, I guess. And alongside this, I also got a 32GB uh, uh, OEM memory card, and the price for that was $30. And then uh, and on top of the sale as well, I got it for probably like uh, close to $25. You know, that's probably the price that those memory cards should have been at, especially for the 32 gig, which was the most expensive you could get here in the States. We never got the 64 gig. Japan only got that because I believe the 32 gig like brand new when the Vita was still relevant was something like $100. They did drop that down, though, at like a year or two in the system's lifespan. But oh, my God, that is exactly what those cards should have cost in all honesty. But it is what it is. Uh, that hopefully we can see another system like the Vita in the future from Sony, but given the, that it's the portal that we got, it seems very unlikely. All right, next uh, two things uh, here is some uh, Japan, the Japanese stuff. First one is Super Mario Sunshine for the GameCube. Primarily got this though, just so I can have the Japanese version of this uh, game, because I have stated in previous videos, I want to get like Japanese variants of all of my GameCube games essentially because that they come in this uh, cute little adorable case uh, here. So pretty nice one to get off the list. And next game is Dragon Quest Monsters Joker 3. I believe that's the proper order of the name, but yeah, this is a Dragon Quest game that uh, is uh, still exclusive uh, to, in uh, Japan on the 3DS. The, I do believe they did do a another re-release of this game with like added content in it. I could be wrong on that, but I do believe this is just the standard edition of the game. But just a uh, 3DS uh, JP exclusive game that uh, I had to go and pick up. Now, these next two things, these aren't games; these are just soundtracks. So two games that both showed up for showed up there, and I was really glad to get them. First one, it is the Zelda Twilight Princess HD soundtrack. I know this doesn't have like every uh, track in the game, but it has like most of the uh, essential ones. Uh, like one that I'm kind of sad is not on here is the Twilight theme. That's arguably my my personal favorite track in the game because it's a very atmospheric and kind of disturbing track. But uh, this is still sealed, haven't opened up yet, but I'm glad to go and get that. 
And the other one, it is uh, the King of Fighters of 14 uh, soundtrack. This one has, uh, I'm sure, like every single track in the game. So you open it up, it has like two discs, uh, uh, three discs in there, sorry, with uh, all of it listed uh, right there. And plus on the other side, beautiful art right there. <laughs> so yeah, both of these were like $10 uh, roundabout, uh, so really glad to go and get those. All right, next uh, up, we have two PS1 games, uh, and both of these I had back then, uh, but no longer have access to my original copies, and even then, they were really beat uh, up and didn't have the original cases. First one is Frogger. I remember me and my cousins, we played this so much, we never beaten it, because this game, honestly, is really difficult and unfair at some points, so that's a lot of guessing work if you're going in the right direction in this game. But I still think this game is still fun. It's really, really cheap to get a hold of uh, still. I do remember this game was released on so many different platforms at the time that uh, the there is a Genesis version of this game, and it is the very last official physical release on the Genesis, if I recall correctly. So, yeah, that's Frogger for you. And the other one is Crash Bash. This is essentially a, a Mario Party knockoff game from Crash Bandicoot, but um, it has its own unique twist on like the whole party formula compared to a Mario Party. Specifically, like this game, it essentially it, it has its own a campaign, and you unlock the mini games as you go through it. So you have an incentive to like play through the campaign of it, where it uh, gets. Uh, kind of like last lackluster is uh, the mini games essentially repeat themselves but as you go on you're unlocking like harder versions of the same mini games essentially so there's not a lot of variety compared to like how mario party is uh, for all of its uh, mini games but it's still pretty fun to play with uh, friends though in my opinion to this uh, day and it's still like really cheap to get a hold of this as well too all right, we got one X-Bone game. It is Gears 5. So I believe I just need to get a Gears of War Ultimate Edition. I should have like every physical release that Gears of War has ever had. I do believe that is the last one I need to get, but still a series I have yet to play through one of these days uh, that whenever I get that last one and eventually a Series X one of these days, and that's probably when I'll sit through and play through this whole series. And we got one 360 game, and this is a pure 360 exclusive. It is Tetris Evolution. So you guys know me that I have been on the hunt for any uh, Xbox 360 exclusives because uh, there's definitely going to be some that's going to pop up in value in the next few months, and more than likely. But this is one that I just saw Retro Taku that was like less than five bucks, if I recall. And yeah, uh, the 360 exclusive Tetris game, interestingly enough, so that's why that I got it. All right, we got a stack of PS2 games. First one being City Crisis. This one, it's, uh, I, uh, originally this wasn't like on my hit list for PS2 games, uh, but after uh, looking up gameplay of it, when I saw it at the stores, like, okay, this game actually does look uh, pretty fun. It is uh, uh, published by Take Two Interactive, and uh, these days, like they're known for being like the publisher for uh, Rockstar. Then it's basically like a helicopter rescue game, and those games that do kind of interest me. Any like helicopter simulator type game or anything related to it, uh, like those that do interest me, honestly. All right, next game. This is a launch title for the PS2. It is Unreal Tournament. Um, this, uh, this uh, game, uh, I don't believe there is a single player campaign to this game, or at least one that would have been comparable to a Time Splitters at the time, which was also a launch title for the system. So you were primarily buying this. So at the time, if you wanted a first person shooter multiplayer game for the system on launch, it still looks pretty nice, uh, though, I'm not expecting a whole lot from it, but because it was a launch title for the system, it's unreal, this might as well go and get it. Okay, next game is Black. This is one um, uh, first-person shooter back during this generation that uh, 
heard a lot of good uh, things about uh, that was kind of like a hidden gem on the system. It was published uh, by EA at the time, too. I've yet to play through it, though, but it does look quite fun, though. Next game is 25 to Life. This looks like a, a third person a shooter, and I remember seeing gameplay of it. it. Does look like a lot of fun, hence why that I got it. So there's that. Next game is Ace Combat 5: The Unsung War. There was plenty of Ace Combat games uh, released on the system uh, back then that I do want to try to get all of them. Uh, and I'm a big, I am like a fan of these types of games, like any like aerial vehicle simulator games like i mentioned uh, for a uh, city crisis like i do like helicopter games uh, but uh, ace combat games i do also enjoy the next game it is contra shattered Sh soldier so i believe this was the only other contra game i had to get on the ps2 the other one was a uh, neo contra that i've had uh, for some time now so I don't think there was any other games uh, in the series released uh, during that generation. Could be wrong, though. Mention in the comments uh, below if I'm missing any other ones. But really glad to definitely get this. So big fan of Contra. I'm glad that it's getting a new release that does look pretty good from the one trailer that we saw of it. All right. These next two games, uh, these are also launch titles uh, for the system. And they are both made by From Software. The first one is Eternal Ring. So... This one essentially is a successor to the Kingsfield games that From Software also made back then, as well as uh, Shadow Tower, that they were basically the same gameplay style. I believe I heard uh, from uh, fans that uh, Eternal Ring is probably the best uh, that uh, From Software has made in terms of like the first person RPG uh, dungeon crawler uh, type of gameplay that they have done. So yeah, that's Eternal Ring for you. If you do want to play this game, I suggest uh, you play it on the PS4 or PS5 because it did get a re-release on those platforms and they did make quality of life improvements to that version compared to the original PS2 version. But for now, went and got it because launch title for the system and made by From Software. And the other From Software launch title that they made was uh, Evergrace. So Evergrace, uh, it is uh, like a third-person perspective uh, RPG game. I don't know like what to compare it to, but you could say this was like a predecessor to Demon Souls. You could say for like how the gameplay looks uh, of this. I haven't played through it yet though, uh, but n nonetheless, do look forward to doing so one of these days though. And should uh, note, uh, the yeah, these were both launch titles that From Software made, but uh, they also made another one uh, that most people will know these days, especially which was uh, Armored Core 2, and it says there on the back of the manual there. Do look forward to getting that one of these uh, days. And I should say the back of that manual right there for Evergrace, it's like the same thing for Eternal Rank, so you'll see like Evergrace on the back of this game's manual too. Same thing for Armored Core 2 for these two games specifically. All right, these next two games, I did have these back then, but just lost them or they were just in really, really bad shape that if I even if I still had them, but nonetheless, really good to finally get these back it is Ratchet and Clank Going Commando. I remember I got this game back then. It was a Christmas gift uh, of, from my uncle, if I remember. And it was during the year when this first launched back then, which I want to say was 2002 or 2003. I don't remember exactly what it says uh, back here. Yeah, 2000, yeah, it was 2003. It, this must have come out in... I, in my opinion, I think this is still the best uh, Ratchet and Clank game we have ever gotten. I have not played the future titles uh, through completely yet, and I haven't uh, beaten the newest one on um on PS Five uh, into the uh, no, not into the Nexus Rift Apart. That's what it is. But um, looking to change that hopefully soon. But uh, still to this day, I think Going Commando is still the best that we have ever gotten from this series. And then the next one is Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal. So this one, as mentioned, I did have this uh, back then. And for some time, I thought this was my favorite game in the series. But recently, this has become my least favorite of the original PS2 trilogy. So my favorites would go 
from uh, going commando one and then this reason is um this game really downgraded like the platforming uh, world exploration element that the first two games had and became way more of a generic uh, third person shooter gameplay which yeah that is a critical aspect of the ratchet and clank games but they really like overdid that and just really like cheaped out on the level design for all of the planets in this game the humor was uh, pretty good uh, though and characters cutscenes were still like pretty funny and entertaining overall but uh, in my opinion this is the weakest link of the original three ps2 games still a good game but to me that's the the weakest link all right next game it is siphon filter dark mirror this originally was a psp game that uh, did get uh, a re-release on the ps2 um there was plenty of games that they released on the ps2 that just got like plenty of uh, re-releases that originally were psp games and uh, there was another uh, siphon filter game on the PSP that also did get a re-release on the PS2 and that was uh, Logan Shadow if I recall correctly and that game I believe was the very last um, Sony published game on the PS2 that we got in the States there was one more that they got later on in Europe that I don't remember the name of right now but no, nonetheless hope to get uh, Logan Shadow though on the PS2 uh, just for the sake of having it Right, in the last PS2 game, I actually also had this back then. Me and my brother, we played this game so much back then. Even with his friends, he played this game so much with them. It is Lord of the Rings Return of the King. My opinion, this is probably the second best uh, Lord of the Rings game that we got uh, back during this generation. The number one, my opinion, is the Third Age. But this one you're going through uh, kind of like a uh, short levels but it's a hack and slash uh, beat em up uh, game that uh, all the characters you play of which there's like a good variety of characters you can play as and they all have their own play styles and abilities uh, that you unlock more moves as you uh, gain experience and go through the levels that you're expected to play through this game multiple times because it's really really short in all honesty but still so much fun to play with friends and especially if you're a fan of lord of the rings all right last game that i got from a retro taku games this month this is definitely the highlight of all that i got it is resident evil code veronica x for the gamecube now if you're into the gamecube you know this is definitely up there as being a very valuable title for the system that uh, even like when this came out uh, it was it's always been like hard to find a copy of uh, this game uh, on the GameCube. You can find Code Veronica X like uh, everywhere on like the PS2 where it was probably most uh, common people picked it up back uh, then. Excuse me. Um, uh, it originally was a Dreamcast a game and even then that has like more copies readily available to buy just specifically the GameCube version for some reason is just really hard to find for some reason. But very happy to get it uh, in the library, though, that uh, not only was this on, like, my wish list for GameCube titles, but I do want to try and get, like, every single Resident Evil game on all systems and even, like, regional variants, especially, like, over in Japan, too. So really cool to get this off the list. All right. These last two games... Um, these uh, were bought off of a uh, awesome uh, veteran content creator that uh, we have known on the platform for a long time, who is Radical Reggie. You guys would know him from the Metal Jesus crew that won't lecture you on him uh, at all, because uh, if you guys watch me, like I'm sure you know who those guys are and you watch them as well. But if you guys remember, it was uh, during October... I uh, came on the uh, PlayStation Collectors podcast uh, hosted by uh, Fizzy Games and uh, uh, Radical Reggie. He was uh, on there as well, and he mentioned that uh, he bought a copy of this game. It was a sealed one, and he said that he was willing to uh, sell me uh, his uh, original copy, uh, that he uh, open copy he had uh, of it. And I accepted like uh, weeks uh, later, and in this game in particular, it is Blender Bros for the Game Boy Advance. So originally, uh, yep, this was from Radical Reggie himself, and this copy in particular, he actually did show this in a Metal Jesus video for a uh, Game Boy Advance Hidden Gems video. It was like the last thing they showed in one of those videos, uh, so 
yeah, it's pretty cool to get this. Uh, I actually, in my, uh, for me, like that's uh, knowing that that's pretty cool to get this. But Blender Bros, uh, this is like a really, really rare game to show up complete uh, online these days. That uh, it's basically like a, a 2D a platforming game that's very similar to Donkey Kong Country, in all honesty. So, really cool to get this off the list and to get it for a very good deal, thanks to Reggie. But this next one he uh said that he would uh, throw this in like last minute uh, for me and uh, this is a uh it's a ps1 uh, pal game and uh, out of like all of my pal ps1 games that i want to get this was the one that i wanted the most and reggie if you're watching i can't thank you enough dude for uh, offering this to me and got for such a very very good deal that uh, yeah i can't thank you enough dude it is Chaos Break. So Chaos Break, it does have a, a Japanese release that is a lot cheaper and much easier to find compared to this, which is the English uh, PAL version. There is like a slight a problem with this uh, copy though, which you can see in uh, the corner right here, there is some damage uh, to that, but it's not really, it's not all that bad in all honesty. Plus I also, um, because uh, Reggie included uh, these uh, in the case. Uh, you see these uh, cards right here. That's the original um, uh, like star um, like ID cards uh, from Resident Evil 1 for Chris and Jill there. So just put Jill on the bottom there so it kind of like hides it up a little bit there. But Chaos Break, it is essentially a Resident Evil clone and a, a very good one at the least uh, though. But if you want an English version of this game, it is really, really, really hard to find it and also pretty valuable as well these days. But this game really should have came to the States and I have no idea why it never did. But nonetheless, got the PAL copy of it and really look forward to playing this game. Though I have played a little bit though and it is quite fun. And my god... If they couldn't have been more obvious that they were ripping off Resident Evil, just look at the main female character on the back there. Just straight up a rip off of Jill Valentine from Resident Evil 1. But yeah, it's Chaos Break. Reggie, again, if you're watching, thank you so much, dude, for giving me a good deal on this. This was one that was on my hit list uh, like ever since like he did like a review of this like more than a decade ago at this point. So really awesome to like buy this off of him as well as Blender Bros. Uh, so yeah, thanks again, Reggie. Appreciate it. So with that said, that will do it for this month's pickups, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so once again, if you do enjoy this type of content, please subscribe for more uh, videos like this uh, in the future. And do share this with your friends. And remember to leave a like as well. Until then, guys, I will see you next time.